In 1945, America was in a fierce conflict with an enemy that was then known as the Japanese Empire, which at that moment in time was quickly collapsing. And it was on this island, barely more than 100 kilometers long, that the fiercest fighting of this conflict took place, Okinawa, also considered to be the last major battle site of the Second World War. This is also where the movie Hacksaw Ridge brings us to the main part of its story. But why was Hacksaw Ridge fought over? What strategic importance did it have? Where exactly is it? And what does it look like now? All these little details in true Hollywood style are completely glossed over. Which for me as a map nerd, who loves playing strategy games and looking at maps in my spare time, breaks my immersion. Context. In a nutshell, the Battle of Okinawa lasted from April 1st, 1945 until June 2nd and was the largest amphibious assault in history. That means that more soldiers and military forces landed in Okinawa than did on D-Day in Normandy. Okinawa was the final stepping stone US needed to take before it could launch an assault on the homeland islands in Japan, particularly Hokkaido, Honshu, Kyushu and Shikoku. As such, the main objective was the capture of Okinawa's air bases as they could be used as the staging ground for bombing Japanese mainland, which was now just some 350 kilometers away. For the Japanese, anything short of victory in Okinawa would spell doom for their country, with Kyushu in particular becoming vulnerable to allied attacks. With stakes this high, one thing the movie got right was the overall bloodiness of the conflict. The Japanese forces had already been depleted, and with this in mind, they chose to concentrate in a number of sectors that offered them the best prospects for a robust, Attritional Defense The Landing March 24th, US Infantry Division lands at the Kerama Islands, located southwest of mainland Okinawa, and is secured as a staging post for the main invasion of the island. In the meantime, in preparation for the assault, US naval elements begin bombarding the shoreline. The daily bombardment was kept up until March 30th. On April 1, day that is also known as L-Day, two US Army divisions land along the southwest corner of Okinawa, with zero opposition and almost no casualties marking the official start of the battle. Until April 4, these US divisions sweep the northern part of the island, where they encounter minimal enemy opposition while taking its airfields. April 5th, the American troops finally locate the Japanese defenders once they try moving south. Pockets of dug-in Japanese defenders become increasingly concentrated the more inland the Allied forces go. It turns out, the Japanese soldiers had been ordered not to fire on the American landing because General Mitsuru Ushiyama wanted to lure the American forces into a trap he had laid for them. In what became known as the Naha Shuri Yonabaru defense line, it consisted of rugged terrain riddled with fortified pillboxes, gun emplacements, tunnels and caves. Hacksaw Ridge was perhaps the most notorious of these. The Japanese headquarters were in Shuri Castle, which was also the most heavily fortified part of the island, and Hacksaw Ridge was right in between Shuri Castle and the US military, playing an integral part of the defensive line. The ridge was a logistical nightmare for both sides. It was inaccessible to American tanks and had to be climbed and taken by soldiers. For the Japanese, the ridge's steep cliffs and narrow approaches didn't allow for machine gun nests to fire down upon the Americans. As they approached, the Japanese had to repel them once they summited the plateau, which transformed into a kill zone. Hacksaw Ridge was finally taken on May 6th. From 13th to 24th of May, the US began taking key defensive strongholds surrounding Shuri Castle. These strongholds include Sugarloaf Hill, the eastern entrance to Shuri Castle, Conical Hill, the southernmost line defending the castle, Chocolate Drop Hill, a circular ring of higher terrain that surrounded the castle. The capital city of Naha was also captured. The US forces had essentially advanced from all sides forcing the Japanese defenders into the center of the island. On the 29th of May, the US took the Shuri Castle after having overwhelmed all its defensive positions. The remnants of the Japanese forces withdrew to the south of the island in Kian Peninsula. Resistance in Okinawa ended on June 21. On June 22, the leading general, Mitsuru Ushiyama, and his chief of staff, Isamu Cho, committed seppuku after reporting the loss of Okinawa. The Aftermath the thing that stands out about Okinawa's battle lines today is the peacefulness. Little of what is depicted in the movie can be seen in the location today, as the vegetation and urbanization has taken hold of Hacksaw Ridge, with the nearby Oroso city 
now having a population of 110,000 people, whereas during the conflict it was completely destroyed. This wall was the point where the soldiers made their way up and down Haxar Ridge, and the battle commenced on top. In reality, it was about half as tall as what is depicted in the movie. It is said that the overall fierceness of the conflict in Okinawa was what pushed the US in the direction of permitting the use of nuclear weapons in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, with the expected cost of invading Japan's home islands now appearing to be unacceptable, and as such, the destruction of the Japanese Empire became inevitable after the surrender of Okinawa. Hey, if you like maps, history and geography, then hit that red button below. Let me know what your favorite war movie is, or like a true story where a location plays a crucial role in the plot of the movie, so I might look into it and make another video like this. When watching the movie, I couldn't get over the fact how the soldiers are just running into harm's way without protecting themselves or using any cover. So looking at images of Hacksaw Ridge today, I can see that there wasn't a lot of land separating the American and Japanese forces. So it's likely that Mel Gibson, when he was making the movie, he was just being faithful when he told the soldiers to just run at each other because they really didn't have any cover or anywhere to hide from each other when they, once they summoned to the ridge. Of course, when I watched the movie myself, this kind of took me out of the immersion and I didn't like it. I thought how stupid this was. They're all just charging in like that. Anyways, this has been Geo Perspective. Out. Have a guess where this is.